Tomas, you don't have to say anything. You say Todd saw me in the window. Mm -hmm. Well, you were the one with him. Did he look up and say, that's Tomas Delgado up there with the gun? Did you see me? Hey, you know, just for fun, Tomas, I think I'll ask the questions. And you still have an answer of all the people. Why did Manning ID you? It's clear the guy hates me. He's already threatened to have me deported, right? Maybe he still has an opportunity to get the police to do his dirty work for him. Okay. What about the syringe in this hospital room with your fingerprints on it? Weren't there other people's prints on the syringe? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Your daughter's. Are you suggesting the syringe was hers? I'm suggesting that everything you found has another possible explanation. I'll let you explain that. You and John are together. Right. Right. Just like you gave birth to my baby. I was delusional then. I'm clear about everything now. Oh, right. I mean, clear. Clear like you saying that you broke John and me up. I'm not deluded anymore. I know what happened. Okay, well, then you should know that John is with Kelly Creamer now. Now nah, that's meaningless. What John and I have means something. What John and you have is in your crazy little head, Marty. Really? Then why did John break a date with Kelly to have dinner with me last night? Just the two of us, my house, very romantic. I mean, we're taking things slow for now, but this time, you won't come between us. Shane's visit is secure. It has been relabeled and properly filed. But I do feel terrible that another patient's confidentiality may have been compromised. I explained how important strict confidentiality was when you wanted to know what Shane had told me privately. Okay. She's on to us. Okay. I took the tape. We didn't listen to it. And I know it was wrong to take it, but I was terrified. If Shane is still talking about suicide, I need to know. Of course. I understand completely. And I want you to know, confidentiality does not extend to situations where a patient confesses being a danger to himself or others. If that was the case, I'd address it immediately. Oh. So, so does that mean that... Shane hasn't said anything that indicates that's the case with him. Thank God. But, Ms. Marasco, I need you to trust that this process does work and not try to fix everything yourself. Actually, Gigi isn't the only one who tried to fix things. Go on. I don't want to get into sp specifics, but I sort of took extreme actions myself. What, are you going to say something, Todd? How's Shane doing? He's fine. He's alive. I really doubt that he's fine after the psychological damage that you may have caused him. I wasn't the only one. You were the ringleader! Is that true? What difference does it make? You want to talk about bullying? What about what Shane's dad did to me? What are you talking about? What did he do? Rex sent some thugs to beat me up. I went pretty crazy when Shane tried to jump off that roof. I just, I just wanted to go after the person who caused it. Just like your son, you and Gigi need to find healthy and legal ways to deal with your fear and anger about what happened. You do understand you weren't helping the situation, correct? <sighs> yeah, all right. Look, I know it was wrong. The, the, the bottom line is I just, I, I didn't, I wanted to make sure Shane wouldn't be bullied again. I think I got my point across. We were lucky that Jack wasn't seriously hurt. Yeah, Mom's boyfriend took care of the guys. Boyfriend? Oh. 
You mean Tomas and Delgado? No, Tomas oh, just sorry. happened to be there, and he is not my boyfriend. And we don't even know if Rex actually sent those guys into Capricorn or oh, not. come on. And you know, I don't blame him if he did. Sure. Because you don't give a crap about me. Oh, Jack. Why don't you just hit me again? What? I slapped him. I'm not proud of it, all right? But it was a knee-jerk reaction after what you said. What did he say? He said that maybe Shane was asking for it. Just like Marty Saybrook. Shane, come on in. Your parents have something they'd like to tell you. Yeah, that's right. I... I took the law into my own hands. Wait, you mean you hired those guys to beat up Jack? No, no, I said I took the law into my own hands. Why don't we just leave it at that? Everyone already said I couldn't fight my own battles. Shane, I'm so sorry. Okay, what I did was not the way to handle this. And, uh... I have something to say, too. After we left here the last time, I I took the tape of your private session. What? But I didn't listen to it, Shane, I swear. I just, I felt so guilty for not knowing what was going on with you. You want to know what's going on? Here, take a look. Everyone else already has. I don't get it. What's the point of talking about my feelings when nothing's changed? Marty Saybrook asked for it. Where'd you get that idea? From you? From me. Yeah, I've heard you say it before. No, no, no. No. Never. I've never said that. Because it's not true. I mean, and even if I had said it, why on earth would you repeat it? Because I want to be like you. And I'd be like me. Yeah, why wouldn't I? I mean, you're rich, powerful, successful. Sit down. Well, I'm also lying in this bed because I ticked off the wrong person. I spent my entire life doing whatever the hell I wanted with little regard for how it affected other people. You know, I have been called bully before. Who cares what those losers think? Do you mean losers like your sisters? Losers like your Aunt Vicky, losers like your mother, I tell you, those people, people we love. That's what they thought of me. No, they're wrong. Well, I, I wish that were true. Listen, I know what it's like uh, to want to take advantage of someone weaker just because you can. Let me get your friends involved. But you have to realize that, that actions can have very harmful consequences. And, uh, I just don't like what I'm seeing here, man. Because I'm seeing me, and the last thing I want for you is to become like me. I'm afraid this whole thing with Dina is turning me back into a conniving girl. You're not a bitch, okay? Enough with that. Star Manning, not a bitch. That'll be a first. Look, but you really aren't, though, Star. I mean, you care about people. You know, you asked this girl to stay at your aunt's place. Danny. When I invited her to stay at La Boue, that wasn't exactly an offer of friendship. Yeah, but that's understandable. I even offered your mom to help her find her mom, and I would have even given her the money myself, but she already told me that she wouldn't accept my charity. Look, look I'm completely 100% on your side on this. Okay, I mean, if you ask me, you're handling this whole situation really well. You think so? Yeah, definitely. So what does James think about Dina sticking around? Well, he says that he won't turn his back on her, but that he doesn't have feelings for her anymore. All right, look. Star's my future. Okay, she's the girl I want to be with. Hey, I just got back from a job I interviewed for last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah, they hired someone with more experience. I'm sorry. It sucks. Yeah, so I still have no money to pay that lawyer who can tell me about my mom and no money for a place to stay. I know Carlotta's not looking for anyone at the diner, but I, I, I can put in a good word for you at the country club. 
They'll be hiring for the summer pretty soon. No. That's really sweet. Thank you. <laughs> Just trying to help out my bro. Oh, yeah, well, since you're Mr. Fix-It and all. Do you have any ideas where Dina could stay for the time being? As a matter of fact, I do. What's this? Tomas will tell you. How did you get that? Well, it doesn't matter how I got it. The question is, are you going to explain it? This is encrypted. And yeah, he does that sometimes with their high-level spook stuff. Are you suggesting... I just want to know why the CIA is so interested in you. Look, Detective, I'm a musician. I travel all over the world. And maybe they have me on some kind of watch list. Tomas, unless you're a very bad piano player, I don't think the CIA is going to put an innocent musician on a watch list. Could I have a moment with my client, please? Yeah, sure. Take your time. When I get back, I think we're all going to have a really good talk. Keep an eye on them. Who are you? You know, I haven't forgotten the way you insinuated yourself between John and me last time, but that's not going to happen again. You are out of his life now. Kelly was a diversion. Because what John and I have, it's real. <laughs> real nuts. Marty, come on, snap out of it. You and John are not together, and you never will be. Really? Why don't you ask John? Ask me what? Well, um, Marty seems to be under the impression that you two are an item. Go ahead, John. Tell her.